So how much horsepower does it take to drive a power steering pump? Uh, I googled this and could not find any definite, definite answers. I found a lot of people's guesses and they made total sense to me, but we wanted to test it. So we took that guy to the dyno and tested a couple of different things that we're gonna go into and I was surprised at what we found. Except that a power steering pump takes some horsepower away from the engine to drive. Nothing is free, we know that. But I've never really thought about the application of it. Watching this video back and seeing how many times I'm asking the front wheels to turn and you know using the pump's power while I'm also full throttle asking the car to go forward, um, it's a lot. And anyone who's done any racing knows you know you can get that power steering pump really hot. It is really working under there or if your power steering pump ever goes out or you've driven a car with manual steering in the same rack, knows uh, it, it takes a lot of force. It's doing a lot of actual work. So that work, that energy has to come from somewhere, so it's coming from the engine. So let's try and quantify exactly how much power that is taking during a run and compare that to driving against a car that doesn't have power steering on it at all. So to introduce it, this, this is nothing special. This is a never opened up, 80,000-ish mile, uh, 99 Miata. It has a racing beat exhaust, still has the cat net, racing beat cat back, uh, and that's it. We've done maintenance on a timing belt, but it's, it's stuck. Um, we've put it on the dyno a couple of times over the past year. It's very consistent. On our dyno, it puts out buck 25, buck 26, pretty much every single time. So first thing we did is put the car on the dyno and get ourselves a baseline. So uh, this is going to be a standard pull just to back up the numbers that we know this car makes. Uh, we did this pull three times just to confirm and each time we were within one horsepower of, of the different runs. So uh, straight line pull, belt is on, it's the way the car normally sits and this is the power that it made. No surprises here, we had 126 horsepower, 110 foot-pounds of torque at peak. Curves look like what they've looked like every time we've put this car on, so no surprises, this is a good baseline to compare to. Next we removed the power steering belt. So this is not purely taking the power steering out, but it's also taking out the air conditioning and the weight of those two pulleys. So the pump itself may take one amount of power to drive, but this is a real-world test of comparing a car that doesn't have those systems at all to one that has them. So we're seeing the horsepower it takes to drive the pump at idle, and also the inertial load of having two extra pulleys and belts essentially spinning around in there. So very interesting. Uh, we have 131 horsepower, and we did do this a couple of times and backed up the number every time. So it's a gain of about four, four and a half horsepower that that pump is taking just idling there. It's going in a straight line, accelerating. Uh, picked up about two foot pounds, two to three foot pounds. The next thing to notice, uh, which does make a lot of sense, is this is not just a peak issue. It's pulling three to five horsepower equally across the entire curve. So even if you're at 4,000 RPM coming out of a corner and you go wide open, you are still consuming four-ish horsepower just by having the pump sitting there not doing anything. For this next test, we put the steering pump belt back on, 
cranked the wheel all the way to the one side, and I wanted to, wanted to simulate worst case scenario. So no, this is not a simulation of every corner you're going through. But this is a worst case scenario. The wheel is all the way turned, and we held the steering wheel over, asking the pump to do as much work as possible, and held it there throughout the entire pull. Uh, we only did this once because the power steering pump was very hot by the end of this pull. But I thought it was, it was really good to show a worst case scenario. You're coming off of a banking or you're going through a slalom and you're really asking that power steering pump to work. Just how much power is it sucking out? We lost six horsepower and six foot pounds of torque when the wheel was fully turned and the pump was doing everything it could do. So now let's compare all three of them together and, and see what the actual comparison here is. If I have a car with no power steering at all, I have a depowered rack, I'm going to have up to 11 horsepower more than a car with power steering that is using the power steering. And it, it's, it works, for, it's the same for the torque and the horsepower and it carries the entire way across the curve. Uh, it, 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 nothing is free, right? That, that assistance that the power steering is giving you to make it easier to turn is coming from somewhere. And if we're talking about a 1.6 Miata that's only making 100 horsepower to start with, that's a big chunk. Now, I'm not advocating that everyone uh, <laughs> run out to the garage and pull the power steering pumps off their cars. Uh, this is just really good data and, and something to think about if you're building a car, and especially if you're building a car for STS or STR, um, and one of the classes where you have the, the option to do stuff, it might be worth considering uh, putting in a manual rack and freeing up up to you know 10, 11 horsepower. Knowing that the downside to that is you're going to have to do all of the work that the engine was previously doing. And that may not trade off to a faster lap time. Um, and if you're looking at a streetcar, horsepower is not everything, right? We're going for the feel of the vehicle and the joy of driving it around. And sometimes adding the manual steering may take some of that joy away. Well, thanks for watching. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. And if there's other tests you want to see done, drop it in the comments. We'll see if we can get that into our schedule. Be sure to go check out our website. And if you're local to us, drop by the shop sometime. We'd love to show you all the cool projects we got going on.